He didn't ask not believing. He asked believing. And God was gracious enough to give him an answer and another promise and a clarification and a bigger role and say, you're going to have this from your own end. It's going to be a God moment in your life because I've made this promise to you and it's a God answer that I'm giving you. You will have an heir come from your body through which all the promises that I have given you for which you cut out about ten years ago and you took off on your own to the land of Canaan. I have a plan for you and here it is more specific than I told you before. Why did God give that to him? That answer to him. Because he loved Abraham. He loved him. Abraham was, con Abraham was concerned. <laughs> what is going to happen? I need to, this, is, this is not what I pictured, Lord, that through me all the nations will be blessed. This is going to come through. This blessing, is it going to come through L.A. easier from Damascus, my servant? It's okay, and I trust that you will carry this out. But is that what you intended for me? Because it looks like it's this. Can I tell you, if you have a promise from God, if you have a word you're clinging to from the Lord, say, this is me, this is me, I don't think he'll reject you if you come to him and start asking him a little bit more details about this thing. Some of you have vision, and some of you have a, a calling on your life, and some of you have a plan on your life that you have kind of set aside because, oh, oh I'm just getting too old. And God, one of, one of the characteristics of a believer is patience. Do you ever come to a thing and say, God didn't do it, therefore he must not be going to do it. going to be doing it. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. I'm just giving up on the Lord. His promise, I must have just misunderstood his promise. Or, if he's, like, like it's going to happen, if he is not accomplishing it, Maybe I'm not doing the thing and stepping in here and making this thing work. We're going to get into that in a, in, in a different sense in a minute. But look at the possibility that all you need to do to get reconfirmed in the vision that the Lord has for you is just asking. It looks like this, Lord. Not exactly what I thought it was, but I guess it is. God gave the answer to Abraham because Abraham, Abraham trusted him. Trusted him. What, what does this look like, Lord? Is this all there is? Consider two cases in the New Testament. I want to, I want to remind you of two. Zacharias was the father of John the Baptist. He got word in the temple, while he was in the temple ministering at the altar, he got word from Gabriel, who comes and shows up right at the altar. I mean, the incense is going, here, uh, he's doing his thing at I believe, afternoon prayer. But anyway, he's smoke, whatever, and Gabriel appears to him. And Gabriel says, I've got good news for you. I'm going to put this in my own words. I've got good news for you. God has answered your prayer concerning the child. And Zacharias, I am quite sure from his answer, it has to be this way. He's probably saying, I am an old man, and I haven't prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer so long ago. So long ago. That we're really too old for this. This is not going to happen. You, I can't. I'm actually getting kind of old. And I'm not sure I don't want that prayer answer. You may be saying that. But he doubts. And when he. Listen to how he says it. Because he almost says. The similar words. That Mary is going to say. When she is told. She's going to have a child. And I'm going to go to Mary in just a second. But listen to his words. It says, it says this concerning Zacharias. He said, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. 
goes on to say, and Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered to him and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to you to speak to you and bring these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. You prayed. You trusted, you believed, God answered in a time that wasn't suitable to you, and therefore you don't believe anymore. But I'm telling you, you're not going to say a word for the next year, likely, until she conceives. There's a sign. Doesn't talk for a year. Mary, same chapter, Luke 1. Look what happened. Same angel, Gabriel, comes to see her. I'm going to tell her she's going to bear Jesus. Oh, okay. Now, in the sixth month, the same angel, the same angel, angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a, Mary who's, uh, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I don't know a man? Does this almost sound like another question why she's asking? But in her case, she's saying, How's this going to happen? You can tell it from the attitude, you can tell it from the answer. Gabriel knew an unbelieving, how can this be, from a believing, how can this be, two different ways. You can say the same thing to God, and it sound one way to him in faith, or you can say the other thing, how can this be, roll your eyes, how can this be. I believe God wants to answer your questions concerning your future that you believe, God wants this in my life, and it hasn't come to pass, and I've just been praying for it forever, and I just have given up. Are you Zacharias that gave up? Because I think he did. Even though he's honored, he's in the temple, doing the incense, doing his, I mean, he's doing his highest call in spiritual realms. He is. Worshiping God as a priest of, the, of a certain tribe, of the tribe of Levi, and he's there doing his thing. Highest calling and doubts God. Are you in the middle of your highest calling, you think, and yet God has a higher calling? What are you doing with your Promise. Are you doubting your promise? Where he wants you to go, and you have set it on the shelf, or are you say, I just, I just need some more confirmation. Ask him. It's what Abraham did. Ask him. Could this be the fulfilling of this? Because it doesn't look what I thought it would look like. Oh, you're going to know when God does a God thing in your life. Yes. You're going to know. And if it doesn't look like a God thing yet, it ain't it. <laughs> you mean he's got something else for me? Yes! Unless you turn your back, buddy. Abram was concerned that he was about to receive less than what he dreamed. And yet we, we, believers knowing the Lord, we have, we see promises, we see promises from him. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Everyone that asks receives. Seeks find. If you ask, if you want, if you need wisdom, ask him. He is, God is, the Father is one who loves to give good gifts to his children. And he loves to fulfill his word. He loves to plant seed so that it grows in you. Grows in you so that you see the fruition. 
Do not give up on the hope that is within you. Let it grow. Water it. But it's still not. Abram was looking at a seedbed that got planted, let's say, ten years ago, and it hasn't sprouted. What did it do? It's a seedbed. It hasn't sprouted. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a day coming when his wife conceives and she showed it. And it's like, ah! I think he's going to be celebrating some 25 years from the time he got his first promise. 24 years, 99 years old when he had this, gave birth. She gave his birth to Isaac. And he's 100. But I'm thinking when she starts to show that she's 90 years old, I'm thinking he's bragging on her. <laughs> Look at this! My God did this. <laughs> so, Ellie Ezer, this servant, was not one of Abraham's own physical children. And he calls, her, calls him this Damascus servant. I just want to call your attention to that because the next one is the second thing where, where sometime by the time we're 86 now, Abraham's 86 or Abraham is 86, Sarah looks around and says, you know that promise that he re-promised you? You know how old I am, Abraham? I am 76 years old. She's taking you down this. I am 76 years old. And if we really get dicey with the words, Abram, he said, you will have this seed out of your own loins. And she says to Abram, this can be your son out of your household. I have my handmaid. She's, she's a fine handmaid. She's right here. And she can bear children where I cannot. It's okay, Abram. If you want to, this is very likely how God wants to. God, He said, you will have this seed out of your, out of your own body. Go ahead. She gives Abraham her handmaid. Who conceives? Her handmaiden is Hagar. Hagar. If you want, I may end up calling her Hagar all day. Um, her name is Hagar. She conceives, bears a son, and Hagar gets mad at Sarah. She's bearing a child. Sarah wanted her to bear a child. She's probably doing what one of her dreams is. I have a child. She gets mad at Sarah. Household problem arises and The interesting part about this, there was a Damascus maid servant. To me, there's now this Egyptian, or the Damascus servant was Eliezer. That's from Syria, okay? Hagar was an Egyptian maid servant. I don't know when she came along, but in my head, she probably came along about the time that Abraham, or Abram, got blessed when Sarah was in the household of the king of Egypt. Tempted to Keep her as his own. And Abraham having Abram having instructed her to be a, just to tell her she's I tell tell Pharaoh you're his sister. Which she was. She was kind of. Okay? But she's also more importantly his wife. I believe she probably picked up that servant when Pharaoh blessed them as they left. She had this servant with her. Faith crisis. <coughs> Abram, God, <coughs> you can still have this child. Just have it through her. Abram, okay. I don't know exactly what his attitude would be, but he has to have a relationship with her. Think, okay do this. It doesn't look like, like what I thought it would be, but let me just step in here and, and do this thing. 
he has, and she has, he, Abram and Sarah have gone through this little episode, I believe one reason is to show us what happens when we step in and do our own thing outside of God's plan. Have you ever, have you ever decided, I like that car so much, I'm going to go into debt a little deeper than I need to go into debt? Anybody been there? Um, <laughs> you're lying on the rest of that. Okay. You, know, you go in farther than what you, it was a nice car. Yeah, you had great, I had a pretty red Ford, 1977 Ford truck, red and white. And I, you know, we haven't got pennies to our name, you know. And I got to look at that little 70, of course, I'm, this is 1979 or so, but uh, somewhere in there, 70, 78, somewhere. It, it was just barely used. That's a good deal. It's been rent once, and so it's, it's an even better deal because I got, got a price way, you know, down. It's like a good deal. And I, I'm thinking, this is, I finally got me almost a new truck. And I'm, like I say, I'm probably like 29 or something, 28 or somewhere in there. Go get this truck, and you know, after I got it, kind of like it's a truck I got right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought of that. <laughs> Which, but it, but I got into it, and it wasn't. It was it's okay. It was just okay. It's nice, very nice. I'm thinking it's pretty attractive. But within three months, I'm, I've made three payments on this thing. I'm thinking it's worth probably less than what I paid than what I'm paying for it. I'm like, what do I do? I got ahead of myself. I paid too much. I don't really want it. It was pretty nice when it was out <laughs> here. And now that I've got it, it's like. Where, where are we getting the money for this thing? What have I done? God blessed me and I was able to sell it within three months and get out from under this loan. And, um, I'm just telling you, have you ever made a decision that was unwise that you found yourself in bondage because you made a decision? Have you ever started a habit because you thought it was cool? K-O-O-L. Cool. Have you ever started a habit that you thought was cool at the time because everybody else is doing it, and suddenly you're chained to that stinking habit? Man. But I thought it was like, this is pretty good. God puts stuff, uh, Satan puts stuff right in front of you to tempt you. And it changes the way he's designed you to be. And you change how you think and you readjust. You say, I can make this happen. And sure enough, you make this happen. And when you've got it, you, it, it starts smelling. It stinks. And now I'm locked in. And oh my goodness. And that's what happened to Abram and Sarah. How many of us have someone in our family that has step into, and maybe us, by the way, I'm just saying, I'm saying that as an Isaac, someone in your family, okay, has stepped into a physical relationship too soon, before God designed it. You stepped in and you made a stinky mess. And you got, you got, not God's plan, not God's purpose, not God's joy, not, you've got a lot of guilt, you've got stinky stuff left over. Why cannot we just step in and say, God wants this for me, and that's part of his promise for me? Man, okay. But what if it doesn't happen? I mean, my, my biological clock is ticking. That's what Sarah was saying. My biological clock is ticking and it's timed up. God can't do this, can he? No, Edward, go into her. Oh, God can do a God thing. Perfectly capable of doing his thing. Bring it back. Confess your sin. 
put it, I'm talking about in general. What is your, what, what is the hang up? Where, what if you got ahead of it? Put it back on the table and say, Lord, I don't know how you can take this and turn it into something good. Here it is. Here it is. Would you fix? Would you repair? Would you restore? Would you do what? Your promise is forever. And God, in his loving kindness, somehow, how is it that he does this? He's able to take the pieces that seem like they're totally wrecked and broken and broken forever. And he somehow starts putting things back together so that you, who thought you'd lost your 100% potential, and in one sense, the, the other plan might have been what he had birthed for you. But having messed it up completely, and now I'm at this stage in life, and I should have been here, but I'm really here. You okay, sir? Okay, look, look this way, would you just make it clear? You found yourself from there, now you're limited here. If that's the case, with you. I want to encourage you. Just say, Lord, I have stinking messed up. Would you take this mess that I have created and it looks like I am stuck with this or whatever the situation, I'm stuck with this. I will not be a Sarah and Abram with the Ishmael situation. I will not try to fix this on my own anymore. I see the mess. Here it is. I'm willing to take whatever it is. Some stuff is in here and it's good, even as a result of this. And some is not so good. Would you take it all as a result of where I've been? Would you take it all, Lord? Fix it. Fix it. I put the dream back in your hands. Would you redeem? Would you save? Would you rescue? Isn't that what he did in the first place when he got saved? myself. Here it is. Lord, would you save? Would you redeem? Would you rescue? I will save, son. I will redeem. I will rescue. <coughs> Sarah and Abram together, kind of, conceive Ishmael. There, is, there are results from the Ishmael thing, which I want to go into next week. There are results that are everlasting, it seems. That relationship, that son, he's the father of the Arab nations. God so blessed Ishmael and his sons, he had a parallel thing going on. God put a parallel thing going on. He blessed many sons. But along with this thing, there was a there was a declaration by the Lord that they would fight among each other, that he would be a, that Ishmael would be a wild man. And sure enough, the whole Arab nations fight among each other. That is Ishmael. Set it around Isaac. <coughs> it did not go away in Abraham's generation, nor in Isaac's generation, nor in the generation over all of Israel. King David, the prophets did not go away. It continues to this day. And we see it on the news. The results of Sarah and Abram's misguided attempt to do God's will without God. Wow. But I'm telling you, could it possibly be that even in that, what if his design is to take all that and draw nations to him? But they're all Muslim. What if God wants to bring the gospel to everybody? Yeah. Just catch a picture. What I'm saying.
say this. My personal theology has to do that I believe that this Muslim realm is what's gathering at the end times. I believe we're close to it. But is there anything to stop any one of them from understanding the Lord? Not one thing. Can any one of them? Can many of them? What if God had a plan that looked like a Nineveh? Said, it looks like this, but i got another plan. What if God's plan was so amazing that said, because he's done this several times, prophecy looks like it's being fulfilled completely and suddenly it's not. Remember when Jonah said, God, why did you save that nation? Why did you save that city? He's mad! Because I knew if I started preaching your, your word, you would turn around and show up merciful. Because they repent. What if what it looks like to me in my little theology, theological world, what if it's really a big fake house? Now, I certainly believe it's probably not a fake. But what if it's a big fake house in this sense? What if there is a great revival yet to come? I'm telling you, why not? Why not? Catch a little vision. God can put this together how he wants in the end times, however he wants it. Do not write off a whole group of people or anything else because he came to save everybody. Yes, they are rebelling against the God we know. They say, Jesus, there's no son of God. Allah has no son. I'm thinking, man, how bad can you get? You step into some truth and you deny the major parts of truth? What is that about? You declare that your God is God of all, and yet the very truths of the word of God you deny? I'm thinking, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Look at that point to the end time. Very well may be. I lean forward, yes it is. But at the same time, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Ishmael. And Ishmael. Wow! That's not where I was headed with this message, so I'm going to skip off that subject. But I, did you understand? There, people have missed second coming stuff for a long time, and I may be one of them. But lots of generations think it. This one, here it is, look, here, here. I'm one of those that says, hey, look. Look, here it is. Off the subject. Let me come back. Still got time to come back. That's good. God's plan from the very beginning for Abraham, Abram, and Sarah was for an Isaac. And Isaac. They, Abraham, and Abram in particular, questioned first. How about, maybe it's just L.E., maybe it wasn't an Isaac at all. Sarah questioned a little bit later, yeah, I'm going to have a child, but you probably can have it with her. Messed up. <coughs> Fourteen years later, she, how much more <coughs> dead is her womb? How much more? Pretty dead. Angels come. <coughs> to visit Abraham. As it turns out, three angels, of, and as it turns out, it looks like one of them is the Lord. They say, this promise is about to be here. But I'm 99 years old. She's 89 years old. And they say the promise within Sarah's hearing. And Sarah has a Zacharias moment. <laughs> You know, picture her as old, but she must have been beautiful, by the way. You know? But picture her. <laughs> I can't believe you said these guys are saying this out here in that tent next door. <laughs> Leave the way. Abraham saying, My day has come. My day has come. I'm talking to the Lord. One believes, one. 
the promise almost goes away later when he starts, when, when uh, he takes Isaac to the mountain. Big of a God thing was it that at 100 years old, Abraham has a son. At 90 years old, Sarah has a son. That at 100, 112 years old, he's walking this guy across to Jerusalem area and taking him up to a mountain, this, this son, and raising a knife to him, this hope that he had. He's 112 years old. The kid's 12, probably. Dad? What are we going to do? We're going to sacrifice to the Lord over here on this mountain over here. Is your dad? Um, I've got the wood on my back, Dad. Where's the sacrifice? Are we bringing the lamb with us? <coughs> Son, my father will provide himself a lamb. Exactly like King James says, to provide himself a lamb. Prophetic. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> Abram, in spite of the fact that all his marbles are resting on Isaac, all his promise from the time he's 75 years old, the promise is coming. The promise is coming. We tried to do it our way, but that's still not the promise. The promise is in Isaac, and 12 years later, he's taking his son over here and saying, I don't know how God's going to do this, but i got to take your life. And he's already promised me, and Isaac, my seed is, my seed is. People don't resurrect that boy. It's the only way. <coughs> As it turns out, he didn't kill him. You know the story probably, but he raised his knife to sacrifice his son who was placed on the wood on the altar. Raised his knife and God provided a lamb over the thing. He said, stop. I know you'll do this. Stop. We forgot a moment. What are you doing with the promise that you got? Abraham had a promise at 75. He tried to fulfill it himself few years later, or try to reinterpret it himself with Eliezer. No, nope, that's not the interpretation, uh, interpretation, Abram. Let me tell you a little bit more. Let me get some more detail here. He tried to fulfill it again with, with, with Hagar and figured out, no, that wasn't it either. And he was 100 years old, his wife has given up, but he hasn't. And God shows up one more time and says, here's the promise. It's for you. It's coming within this year. Oh, I'm a hundred years old, and I got a promise from God, and I just need to hang on one more year. Can you hang on one more year? Hold on your promise? What if it's like Abraham? What if you feel like you're too old already? Much less. Ten years from now. Fifteen years from now. What are you going to do with the promise of God that's in your hand what are you going to do with it? You're going to say, I'm too old. You're going to play the Sarah role. I'm too old. Can't do it. Or you're going to play the Abraham role who had a slip up in the middle that said, okay, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I want to remind you, God can take the mess-ups of a Sarah, Hagar, Abraham thing and turn it into something else. I'm going to read you a couple things because I've closed the beast box. God, at any point in your plan, for you, in his plan for your life, that even got messed up to the point that you think he will not accomplish his plan through me, he can give you a restart. Restart. Yeah. A restart. That's what confession is. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. You get a restart. You're a conversation away from a restart. Not tomorrow, right now. 
I can do a restart, and I can humbly confess my mess, and I can ask for forgiveness for having done my own thing, and somehow I trust that God, in his infinite grace, will take the stinking, broken pieces that smell and look like they cannot be fixed, and he can pick them up and make his beautiful plan perfect, maybe different than what it would have been had I not obeyed, or had I not disobeyed, but can make a perfect plan in your life if he gets the pieces back from you that you have hoarded to yourself in an attempt to make it happen for you. Though he may put those pieces together in a lesser way, in other words, your potential might not be where you thought it was before, but it may be here, he can make it 100% of your potential that you have yet to come. He can make it a 100% God moment in your life. Don't waste it. Don't waste your days. Don't believe the lie of Satan who tells you it can't happen. He'll put those things to Jesus, the Lord. We'll put these things together in a way that brings him a God moment so that he can get glory out of your situation as he, <coughs> over time, fixes you, saves you, redeems you, repairs you, rescues you. That's his plan. Would you bow your hands? Father, there are people in this room who are convinced that they're beyond fixing, or have been convinced that they're beyond fixing. And I dare say, Lord, if we were 75 years old, we might say we're beyond fixing. If we're 80 Three years old, we might say, Lord, is this all you've got for me? Just this Eliezer, this one from Damascus. If we're 86 years old and beyond something else, we might say, like Sarah, this ain't happening with me. Try this other method. Or at 100, Sarah laughs, it ain't happening with the Lord. But Abraham says, I have this promise. What are you doing with your calling on your life? Don't waste another day. Do not waste one day. Father, it's my desire that those in this room catch a glimpse of what you have designed for them. A re-catch. Because I think many of us have understood God wants certain things for my life. And I've almost given up on this dream. I've almost called, I've almost renamed it. That's not really what God wants, but just what I thought somebody else wanted. So if it was what a God thing, it wouldn't happen right now. And I believe that if it's a God thing, we latch back onto it. Yes, He said this. And I, by the grace of God, am going to accomplish the things He designed for me. And He's going to do a huge God thing in my life. Father, I pray that prayer on every believer this morning. Everyone has potential. Doesn't matter if you've had a stroke. Doesn't matter if, you're, if you've given your life to a habit that you couldn't break. It doesn't matter. You have a rescue moment ahead of you. You must, you must, you must go lay it down and say, God, would you pick up the pieces? If that's you and you're ready to say, God, take this mess and pick up the pieces and fix me, would you raise your hand and say, that's me? And raise it to God. That's me. Pick up these stinking pieces, Lord. They're yours, they're yours, they're yours. Would you do this work? I'm asking you to just do that in a, in a, in a, in a raise hand moment. Just do that. It's me. Fix the stink. Don't, don't waste another day, family. You can raise your head. Yesterday I turned, I turned 62. I'm eligible for Social Security. That's not good. <laughs> I'm just telling you. 
by age, I can take Social Security. I don't plan on doing it, but at least yet, anyway. Um, I could easily say, because it almost implies retirement, I could say easily, can you retire? in doing nothing. I'm thinking the calling on my life from the Lord does not end. Amen. Does not end. Well, that's pretty cool to me. I think I was made to work. I think I was made. I know, I might. Ideally, all of us ought to be able to, to love doing the thing we're called to do. So that it really is not so much work. It's like we get accomplished the things we're called to do, and we do them, and we enjoy every minute of it. I pray that for every one of you. And in that sense, don't retire. <coughs> That's my picture for you in the law. Is do not waste another day thinking he's not going to accomplish this thing. Pick your hope back up off the table and say, I don't know how he's going to do this, but he's a God thing. He's going to do it. Stop being so down in the mouth about he <laughs> quit being a Sarah. Except for you, Sarah. You would be Sarah. But quit, being, <laughs> quit being a Sarah. He can't do it. Quit being a Zacharias. I'm too old. Quit being one who says I have messed up and I've broken the possibility. Why are you so cast down, O oh my soul? Put your hope in God. You let it go. I'm done. Went ten minutes after. Sorry. No, I'm not. <clears throat> You'll be fine. God bless you. Um, let's dismiss. We do have a meeting tonight at our home um, at uh, 1811 Big Band. But you bring chili. You said chili. You said chili. Okay, I can probably do that. Um, I'm also cooking Wednesday night, I think. No, Stacy. Stacy took it for me this week. Is that, was, that was her. That was a Just taking it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You, gotta do, you have to do the old man dance with the cackle. <laughs> okay. All right. I think chili is a good idea. It's pretty fast and it works. Okay. So if you want to bring something to go with chili to the house, that'd be great. We come. Okay. It's five, six o'clock, and uh, seven o'clock to five seven o'clock. Right, listen. Raven, what do you got? The kids. Make them. Yes. We don't have a formal taking care of the kids, but yes, they can. You know, sometimes they just keep them out of the street. I'm sorry. Hey! Come on, kid, let me give you a hug.